Do you want to build complex decentralized apps like Uniswap? Uniswap makes heavy use of multi-call transactions. But unless you know how to programmatically decode these, like this one here in Etherscan, there's no way of knowing what contract functions are actually being called by Uniswap, making it difficult to replicate Uniswap's logic. I click the decode button, and this is basically useless. It means nothing, making it very difficult to understand what's happening under the hood and rebuild any of Uniswap's logic yourself. Watch this video and I'll show you the easiest and fastest way to decode Uniswap multi-call transactions. That's to say convert this into English so we know exactly what functions are being called on a Uniswap contract and what arguments are being passed to those functions. I have an empty JavaScript project set up here. I'm using WebStorm as my IDE, but you can use whatever you like. I have two packages installed, the ABI decoder and Axios. That's all we'll need. The first thing we need to do is create a file where we'll be putting our code. So I'll create a new file called decode multicall.js. And inside it, I'll start by importing both of our libraries, Axios for making API requests, and the ABI decoder, which we'll use to decode the multi-call transaction. Now we'll need to copy some information from the transaction in Etherscan. So this is already partially parsed, but we want the original. So click View Input As and go to Original. And copy this into your code. We're going to create a variable called Data. And we'll paste this as a and we'll paste this in as a string. This is exactly the value of the data attribute which was sent when that multi-call transaction was created. I have another video on creating multi-call transactions from a script. If you're interested, check that out. Now we need to copy one more piece of information from the Etherscan transaction. And that's the address of the contract that we're interacting with, or that this transaction is interacting with. So we'll create another variable here, and we'll call this contract address. In our case, this is the swap router contract. Now you'll need to paste in your API key for Etherscan, and I'm going to put in a fake API key here, as I'm going to keep my own key private, as should you. If you use this one I just typed in here, it's not going to work, because I made it up. And if you don't have an Etherscan API key already, create a free account on Etherscan and you can create one. And then paste that key in here. Now I'm going to paste in the URL for the endpoint, which we will be sending a request to. And this is an endpoint on Etherscan, and it allows pulling the ABI for a contract. And in our case, it's going to be the contract address that we just specified up here. So this will be pulling the ABI for the swap router contract that the transaction that we're decoding um, was run against. Alternatively, you could create a file and put the ABI inside your project. But I think dynamically pulling the ABI is a little more 
dynamic, and easier in my opinion. Now we're going to write the world's shortest function to pull the ABI from Etherscan. This needs to be async because we'll be waiting on a response. We'll call it get ABI. And in the first line here, we'll make a request. We'll do await Axios get, and then we'll pass in our URL. And then we're going to parse the response and return it. And that's it for this function. Now create our main function where the magic is going to happen. We'll call it main. We'll also make this async. And the first thing we'll do is call that get ABI function to get the ABI for the contract. Then we need to add the ABI to our ABI decoder that we imported at the top. And if you don't do this, the decoding is not going to work. So we call the add ABI method on it and we pass in our ABI. Now we're going to actually decode the data here. We'll name this variable decoded data. And we'll call the method decode method. And we'll pass in data. Now I'm going to console log the result of that. And I'm going to wrap the result in json.stringify before I print it. And you don't need to do that, but it just prints all of the nested values. So it's going to be easier to see the whole object that's returned from our decode method method. Now let's give this script a run in our console with node decode multicall.js. We're not done yet, but I just want to show you what we've built so far. We'll call the main function in our script, and then let's give this a run in the console. Now before I run this, I'm going to update my API key for Etherscan. Um, otherwise, it's not going to work, but I'm not going to show you that part. And we can see here the top level multi-call in the transaction with two params, the transaction deadline, and then another param which has some more data in it. And this is really what we want to decode because otherwise we still don't know what function or functions were called in the multi-call. What we need to do is call the decode method and pass this as the argument. So I'm going to get the second params object, and then I'm going to get the value um, that's in that, and we'll pass that to the decode method. I'll call this inner decoded data. And instead of passing that same data object,
I'm going to do dot params and grab the second object, and then dot value and grab the first object. And then let's console.log this. And let's rerun this script in our console. And here we have it clear as day. Inside the multi-call transaction, the function that was called is swap exact tokens for tokens. And these were the arguments passed to that. Now this was a very simple multi-call transaction, but they can get quite complex. And knowing how to reverse engineer transactions made by complex apps like Uniswap can be invaluable if you're trying to replicate its behavior in some of your own apps. What questions and comments do you have? What other tutorials do you want to see me make? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Blockman out.